All right, everyone. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, as always, we really appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for coming to uh, episode 11 of season two of Line Change with Coach Ryan Michael. I uh, understand that you've probably got plenty of questions to ask tonight, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep my part of the show very brief. I'm just going to ask these gentlemen one question each, uh, and from that point on, the show will belong to you guys. We're going to have a crowd mic that we pass around as always. The only thing that we ask is that you please ask your questions and voice your comments into this crowd mic so that we can get it onto our archive version on YouTube later on. Um, our guests tonight are forwards Mike Chamello and Colton Walter. If you would, please give a round of applause to these two gentlemen. We're really excited to have both of them here, uh, but the first question I want to ask, uh, as always, is to Coach. Um, Coach, you guys went up to Peoria this past weekend. I thought you had some brilliant flashes um, both Friday and Saturday night. Took the Rivermen to overtime for the first time in a couple of seasons, got a point on Friday night, had a great start to the game on Saturday, and unfortunately things took a turn for the worse, I think, uh, towards the end of the second period there. If you could just take one thing away from that series, what do you think it would have been? I thought it was a, a pretty good weekend, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Friday, we had plenty of chances to bury and couldn't find a way to get a couple that maybe we should have and um, played pretty well, well enough defensively. Stewie played great. Um, and then Saturday, you know, I thought it was it was stellar up until kind of the end of the second. And, you know, I, I said it in between periods is, you know, maybe the difference of going into that third period with the score being two nothing versus two one. I, you know, by it's one goal right. difference, but it's it, I think it means everything in the world. Um, and and why I was frustrated with that goal was it was you know twenty seconds left in the period, so it's vital time. Um, like I said, we're up two nothing on the road in a building that's hard to play in against a top league, top team in the league, and right. we win the draw clean and we don't execute. You know. The, the face-off play, and it turns into a goal with 12 seconds left, and I think that's, that kind of got them going um, a little bit, and, you know, I'm, I could have adjusted a little bit quicker to some things in the neutral zone, I think, in the third, but, um, you know, for it was a, a promising weekend in the sense that like, we frustrated the crap out of that team for mm -hmm. a good portion <laughs> of that weekend, so um, obviously one point isn't good enough, and I think we certainly could have had more than that, but um, in terms of team play, I thought it was it was better. It was more consistent for the most part. Yeah, without a doubt. And if if that's a series where you just looked at the box score and saw the final score, you're really not getting the the, the whole picture. It was a, an outstanding effort put forth by the Mayhem uh, both nights. Um, really, it just you could just feel it. Even from watching the game on SPHL Live, the huge momentum shift that came at the end of period two, as you said on Saturday. But uh, for those of you tuned in, I'm, I'm sure that uh, you're aware of what was announced earlier on uh, Mayhem social media, but uh, the team officially announced its extension with Spectra. We will be staying here for the next five seasons. Uh, obviously, everyone in the organization are extremely ecstatic with the news today, and we, were just, we just can't wait uh, to see what the future holds here in Macon. And this was, uh, this was the plan from day one. We always wanted to make this a long-term home, and it's, it's great for all of us to see that it's uh, coming to fruition here. Um, but, Mike, I wanted to ask you about that because you're somebody who's pretty vested in this community now at this point. You've been kind of in and out of rotation here with the Mayhem for the past couple of seasons. Uh, you know, you, you met your girlfriend here. You're very uh, involved here in Macon, and you clearly love playing here. So my question to you is what was your reaction when you found out about the extension today? I mean, I was just excited for Macon and for the fans that, you know, they get five more years of hockey. I know that there's a, a passionate group of fans here, and I think it's exciting for everybody that there's more hockey in Macon. And obviously for me, I always love coming back here. I have my girlfriend, Kelly, um, that she tries me to continue to be here in Macon, and I, I work as hard as I can for it. And uh, I just think that it's it's awesome to see that there's five more years. I know there was some uh, speculation or mm -hmm. uh, there was things going around about what was going to happen with Macon. So I'm thrilled for all of the fans. I'm thrilled for the community. It's great to have hockey. Uh, being a Canadian, I know that hockey uh, is a big part of you, so I can imagine what it's like for some of the fans here. I know it's like to have hockey as a big part of me, so uh, I'm just 
really happy that it's going to be back here in Macon for five years. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you you hit on the uh, the big sigh of relief. I think that's just because of how much speculation there was with the, the state of the current contract expiring at the end of the season for all parties involved, whether it's staff, players, fans. Um, just a huge sigh of relief for everybody. Um, so, Colton, this next question I have is for you. You made your debut with the team this past weekend in Peoria, got your first taste of playing with the Mayhem. It didn't take you long to assert yourself. On Saturday, you had a goal and a fight. Um, <laughs> so getting right into the, the Mayhem style of hockey, which we appreciate. Um, my question to you is how have you felt like you've gelled with the team through just two short games of being here? Uh, I think it's been uh, been a good process. You know, everybody's that I've uh, met through the team is uh, welcoming in with open arms and uh, everybody's a good guy in that locker room and there's no uh, groups or cliques or anything so it's an easy fit to come in from uh, Roanoke in just a short amount of time. For sure. All right, guys, I've got one more question for you and then I'll let the audience take over as I'm sure they're uh, chomping at the bits to do so. The question is this. Uh, it's Nick Knight on Saturday, as all of you are aware. Specialty jerseys have been released. They will be worn on Saturday and auctioned off after the game is over. What is all of your favorite Nickelodeon shows from growing up? I guess I'll start us off here. Sure. Uh, I'm going to go with SpongeBob. Solid choice. <laughs> yep. SquarePants. Uh, that was one of the biggest ovations we've ever had. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's going to have to be SpongeBob, too. Probably, SpongeBob, honestly. all right. Coach? Yeah, mine is definitely SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a clean slate up here. All right, guys. Well, that's all the questions that I have. Um, the next show, the next part of this show will now belong to you. Um, again, the only thing we ask is that if you have a question or a comment, please do so into the microphone here so we can get it all saved on our uh, YouTube channel after the show is over. All right. Tell me about Stathis and Jared. <laughs> As to what? Why? As to why. Okay. Um, well, I'll say it this way. Um, um, Stathis did something I didn't appreciate and approve of this weekend, and as a result, I chose to sat him or sit him, bench him, didn't play him, and came to be a mutual decision that you know he didn't want to be here anymore, and I didn't want him here. So, um, in order to get the deal done, I got done. There was another bystander, and it just happened to be Cup. So. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, so I haven't finished watching last weekend's games, but since there hasn't been a line change in between those two, one of the things I noticed from the previous weekend is our power play units went from being what's usually four forwards in 1D to three forwards in 2D. Yeah and wanted to know if that was an intentional choice to try and limit some of the shorthanded opportunities or was giving guys a different look on the power play? Uh, what was kind of your uh, motivation for making that switch? Um, it was a bit of both. I mean, I felt like, like Roanoke's got, if you watch their games online, their end zones are a bit bigger. Um, so part of it was kind of mixing it up and giving it a, a different look, kind of rotating from a, a bit of an overload to an umbrella and constantly just kind of moving. My only issue when we do, when we have 1D, it's we're in a 1-3-1, essentially. And my only issue with that is we just get too static and um, at times and, and think that, well, I have to stand here the whole time. And we kind of stop thinking and stop moving. So I tried to simplify it and break us of that habit by changing it up and just giving a little bit more freedom. Um, so that was kind of the decision. I mean, part of it was also, you know, I mean, even in Peoria, we had one sequence where um, one of the units, I, I had sent 1D and four forwards, and I had a forward getting too low into a battle where he shouldn't have been, and I saw almost a two-on-one just develop right in front of me. And um, so that kind of put me off uh, on that so I mean tomorrow we're going to work on it a good bit because we need to be better I think that you know um, scoring I'm, I mean they have the best special teams in the leagues but you know have, being able to score one or two you know Friday or Saturday maybe is the difference for us winning and getting that extra two points so. what 
I was going to say off uh, her last comment is, Colton, welcome. Chemo, Tamela, you're not going anywhere. You stay put. And we're, just a reminder, we're only, what, two or three points from being in the playoff, I mean, eighth place. Is that accurate, about two or three points yeah, I from? Yeah, uh, in relative to the deal or, like, or why I made the trade? No, we're, no, 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 nothing no, with get, the trade. Okay. Just our standings. Yeah, yeah, we're right there. Yeah, we're right there, so we still got a season to play. I mean, right. we're still in this. Right, and that's, I mean, for me in that deal, it was, you know, I, I want to win now. And I fully intend on making playoffs. So, um, and at the same time, I think, you know, we need to, to get younger a little bit. Um, and I saw it as an opportunity to get, you know, a couple pretty good rookies that have established themselves early and uh, I think can, can be even better, you know, moving forward. So. This is the opposite of what happened two weeks ago. <laughs> uh, so my question is for Colton. You had a, a really interesting 2018-19 season where you got to play for three teams, and one of them was the cha- uh, the uh, regular season champion uh, Peoria Riverman, and then you got to go to Roanoke that got to knock them out of the playoffs after the challenge round. Uh, while you were in Roanoke, when that challenge round happened, did that really cause as big a stir in the locker room, feeling disrespected that you got chosen, or was it more of just an on ice thing that uh, you felt caused that upset? Uh, we had a feeling going into the selection show that they were going to choose us as their uh, first round pick. So, uh, you know, I mean, we kind of just had a little bit of a edge to us because there's not just myself, but there are other guys that have played for Pure's organization for some time that ended up in Roanoke, and so. It was kind of feel for the fire and just kind of motivated us to go out there and get the job done. (laughs) Better set that fantasy lineup, Sean. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints? I mean, I've, I have another one, so... I'd okay. Go ahead. Uh, so following up on that last part there about being in Peoria and uh, Roanoke, you were also in Huntsville for a portion of that season. And does it ever feel strange, like, thinking back, kind of, what if I had stayed in Huntsville and they continue on, or is it more of a clean break in your mind and you don't want to go there? Uh, you know, obviously... Uh, when you end so when you end up somewhere, you obviously want to be there as long as you possibly can, and just kind of build a tenure there. But uh, unfortunately, this profession it doesn't always work that way. So when it happens, it's just kind of a clean breakaway. There's no hard feelings on either side, and it's just you have to find a spot to go somewhere else and uh, kind of build up the same resume. Um, so a couple years ago, the guys would go to the elementary schools and like read to the kids. How come that they're not doing it this year? Or was that a promo that's just not come up yet? Or is that just something that they're not possibly going to do? Um, to be honest, I don't really do that. That's not really part of my daily figuring out. So I don't want to throw the guy to my left under the bus or the gentleman way to the right <laughs> over at the bar under the bus so I don't know if they want to answer that <laughs> but, uh, Zach would you care to answer chime in <laughs> well you need the microphone yep either that or speak up she was wondering why we haven't done as many readings to the kids at schools this season Practice we're practicing when pra- they want us there. Yeah, in the morning. Yeah. So I think that's it. 
they were just there. They were just at Georgia College today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we do that quite a bit with colleges. Mm -hmm. We've uh, we've got a couple of interns from Wesleyan, and th they are they're great. Um, I don't I can't really speak to how much they like uh, represent us on campus or what they do, but I know that Tyler, who is the one who found them, um, has kind of had them, you know, working at booths and passing out flyers and things like that. Um, but I see what you're saying about doing a more hands-on approach at Wesleyan for sure especially with college night coming up right <laughs> mm -hmm. okay yeah thank you mm -hmm. Got a question from DJ, who's usually here. He couldn't make it tonight. Uh, he asked, Coach, uh, with the arrival of several new faces coming to Macon, what excites you the most about what this team can potentially be capable of down the stretch this season? Also, is Entma back? And if not, what's his timetable on his return? Or is he? I guess he's asking well, if he's 100%. Yeah, Entma's back. Um, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I thought he was good Saturday, maybe a little rust. But mm -hmm. you know, overall, health-wise, he's fine. Practice today. Um, so that's that's square. Um, you know, new faces, it's, you know, especially with the deal I just did, I think it's, I think it gives us a little bit more depth in some areas we needed it. Um, and again, it's, it's some younger guys that, um, you know, if you look at, for example, Fayetteville's forward group, they're very deep and they've got a lot of skill. So I think, you know, those two guys are guys that maybe weren't given the best opportunities with sure. kind of the guys they have there. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe with more opportunity here, they, their, their ceiling's even higher. So, um, you know, I thought, I just think it was important to grab some younger guys that are good now, but I think can be good, you know, by the end of the year and, and next year. And um, so that's, I think that's what's the most exciting part for me. In that vein, do we have an uh, update on Danny Caesar and how he's uh, doing? Um, I put him back, or I moved him from the 30 to the 21. He's um, still not 100% necessarily, and we're kind of working with um, with somebody through the recommendation of Ortho to kind of figure out where he's at. Um, so, I mean, there hasn't really been much of an update. It's still kind of a, a waiting game just to make sure we have all the facts and, you know, you know he's 100% and and whatnot until we, until we make a decision. So. Hello. Hi. Hi, hey. Hi again. Hey. <laughs> okay, we have a lot of road games coming up, and we've won one road game, which was cool, and we've won, well, we've lost in overtime, but we still got a point from that. What is the game plan? Because we've got a lot of new people coming in. Is there a like a ma like a master plan that's going to happen that you can talk about or in terms of what like in terms of are we going to see more wins? Am I breaking out the magic sauce now to win? Is that yeah <laughs> like, yeah? yeah. <laughs> um, I mean we just got to keep getting better. I mean I think we're getting there. It's and I think we just gotten kind of to a point where maybe it's more personnel change. Um, I, I don't want to do it too much because I don't want it to be a constant. You know, new faces and guys constantly on the learning curve. But at the same time, I also think it's beneficial because um, I mean, guys, I want to say they're more hungry or more eager. But you know, sometimes a change of scenery is, is good for both you know the team as well as the player. So um, you know, I think both guys I'm bringing in are, um, or all the guys I'm bringing in are going to be impact guys right away. Um, and, you know, like I said, adding some depth maybe up front and getting a right shot defenseman, which we desperately needed, having five lefties. And, you know, I think, you know, and, and speaking specifically to Art Felt, I think he's going to be, you know, a, a good D for us now. And I think in, in the years to come, I think he'll be a good D too. So um, in terms of the master plan, it's just keep, grind, keep grinding away. I, 
um, you know, we got back late Sunday, so we didn't practice yesterday. So um, just kind of keep tinkering with things that I think we need need to, like power play, and did a lot of you know always own entries and down low play, breakout stuff, just you know areas where I think we could be lights out or get as close to you know operating at a high level that'll kind of help us. So that's that's the master plan. Uh, so my question is for all of you. Um, there are a lot of odd rules in the SPHL that you don't see in the higher levels of hockey. Uh, veteran minimums, no stick curve, li- stick curve limits, five round shootouts, and so on. Is there anything in particular that you wish would be added as a rule or change that's currently there now? Get rid of the trapezoid. There's been a few times this year, and I'm sure every coach can say this, where goalie actually plays the puck outside of the trapezoid and it doesn't actually get called so mm-hmm. um, yeah get rid of it yeah I don't know I'm, I hope I don't get in trouble for that no it's but, fine yeah. <laughs> we're fine is that you guys have something I gotta think yeah I gotta think too I gotta think too the delay of game penalty I've always kind of had qualms with um, I mean I guess that's at all levels of play and including the NHL but I don't know, if you fling the puck over the glass from your own zone, I don't think it should be a two-minute minor. I think it should be a defensive zone face-off. You can't change lines. It should be the same punishment as icing, in my opinion. That's just a personal opinion on it, because I think it, it happens a lot in the heat of the moment. It's not an intentional. You're not trying to clear the puck out of the play. To, you know. What do you think about that one, Coach? Well, I don't, I don't – well, are we talking, like, hockey or, like, could this be, like, front office stuff, too? Anything. <laughs> whatever, whatever you got. <laughs> I think for me – and uh, – God, I don't even know if I want to say this. Um, the, the roster size, I wish, yeah. was a little bigger. Um, just because, you know, we don't have – in terms of the IR, we don't have seven or 14 day. We only have 21, and um, you know, at other levels, they have the flexibility of you know reserve, and um, that kind of gives you a little bit more more help in situations, especially when we're not affiliated and, and guys are getting called up or, or whatever injured. Then you know, sometimes, like you've seen this year, where I've had to make something happen in in six hours or five hours. So we're not playing incredibly short for the weekend. So, I mean, I guess that would be the only thing. Yeah, just the roster size was the first thing that popped up to my mind, too. <laughs> just shy. I don't talk a lot. <laughs> this is for Colton. Um, I see that you and your brother went to the same college together. How was that to be playing in college with your brother? Um, yeah, obviously, uh, playing college hockey is a dream come true, and then playing with your twin brother is a whole different story. Um, you know, for as long as you know, he's my best friend for my entire life, so getting to spend those four years with him and then playing hockey with him and then getting to play our final game together and winning a championship was something special that I'll never forget, and it's lifelong memories like that that you hang on to forever, so it's, it's very, very fortunate to have done that with my brother. Coach, any chance we see Walter number two on the roster anytime soon? <laughs> have a Sedin twins type of situation? I don't know. No, uh, my brother, unfortunately, he hung up the skates and he's a corrections officer in Colorado now. Okay. So, uh, so no. Oh. Yeah, probably not. It's too bad. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Okay. Um, Sean, did you have anything else? I got one more. Mm -hmm. Uh, So my question is for Mello. Well, I actually have two because I've pronounced your name like seven different ways now. (laughs) What is the correct pronunciation of your last name? Are you talking Canadian or Italian way? (laughs) (laughs) There's a difference. How how is it that you would like me to say it? Uh, However you want to say it, really. Uh, (laughs) 
I mean, teachers in school, they, use, they usually call me Chamelo. But if you talk to my nonna, my grandmother, it's Camelo. Okay. That's the proper way in Italian is Camelo. So, uh, but whatever you feel like, Chamelo seems to kind of roll off a little bit better. So uh, people usually go with Chamelo. Does... <laughs> yes, that's how my mom calls me too. So she would like that. Does your grandma listen to the broadcast? Because if she does, I should probably change the way that I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> she might actually be listening today. Okay. All right, from now on, you're Camillo. Uh, she'll like that. Yeah. She appreciates that. <laughs> she'll text me later and say. So my other question for you uh, was that you bounced around a lot, and I know from my own experience playing that that can be challenging, and it changes the way you kind of think about your own game. Uh, so what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned in the past two years playing professional hockey? Uh, just kind of enjoy every moment you have because you don't know where you're going to be necessarily, or at least for me. I just didn't know where I was going to be, you know, exactly. So uh, just try to enjoy every day and, I mean, appro approach it as, you know, just work as hard as you can and enjoy the time with the people that you're with for whatever time you're there. And, uh, you know, you'll usually always see me smiling and stuff, and it's because... I just enjoy being here, and I enjoy being with Kelly, my girlfriend. So for me, it's just, yeah, it's just another day and enjoy it because you don't really know, you know, how many more days you have left or uh, so, and just try to work as hard as I can. All right, guys. Well, as always, thanks so much for your participation. We really appreciate it. Uh, I've got one last question for Coach, and then the trivia question, as always, will be at the end. Uh, Coach, we've got three games in three days coming up. Uh, you guys are no stranger to that situation. We've had a couple of road trips in which you've played three days in three cities uh, in three games. So uh, my question to you is, what's been the, the message to the team in practice this week, knowing full well the, uh, the grind that awaits? Um, well, again, like I said, we didn't skate Monday just because we got you know back at 9, mm -hmm. 15 on Sunday night. So, um, you know, yet today was it's not a physically taxing Two days of practice, but it's it's a little bit more, you know, structural and, and executing kind of what I'm looking for. So, um, you know, like tomorrow there'll be a good bit of, of special teams, you know, both power play and penalty kill, and some neutral zone work, and um, you know, playing three different teams in three different nights is a bit of a challenge, just because you got to kind of figure out tendencies of each. You know, Pensacola is a bit more of a heavy team, and Huntsville's got. Uh, some heaviness, but a little bit more skill. And then Knoxville is obviously highly skilled, very fast, smaller team. So it's just kind of trying to, you know, figure out, you know, how do we best counteract what, you know, they're doing and, and, and gives us success. So, um, you know, again, not physically taxing these, mm -hmm. these last few days, um, but just trying to be, you know, sharp and, and, and doing it right in practice so that way, you know, when – we're under fire and, and under pressure during the game. You know, we're we're trained to, to you know execute at a high level. So. Yeah, for sure, and uh, without a doubt, lots of film sessions for you in the coming days. Lots of preparation uh, for you to do. But uh, as we said, you're no stranger to that, and that's something that you enjoy doing. Um, that's the last question I have. Final thing that we're going to ask is always a trivia question, and it's this: What jersey number does Colton Walter wear for the Mayhem? No. No. You get one guess. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> so that you don't just go numerically. There you go. Congratulations. Was it Lisa? Did you get it? Congratulations. <laughs> You've won an autographed puck from Colton Walter and Mike Chamello. <laughs> Camello, I'm sorry. Come on, uh, already. It's been like five minutes. <laughs> you don't get one then. All right, guys, thanks so much for coming out. We really appreciate you being here, and we hope you've enjoyed your meals, and hopefully we'll see you again next week. Thank you.